<laughs> that's what JYP said when he created this group. Oh, that's so savage, bro. Enmix is the world's most controversial K-pop group now, with some people loving them and some people hating them. Why? Hi, my name is Jordan Orm. I'm a professional music video editor for artists like these guys. Let's learn about what the heck is going on with Enmix's editing. Oh my. The production value. All right, I'm not gonna lie, that was kind of the coolest 20 seconds I've seen in a long time because I had no idea what was going on. Now, if I was listening to this, I'd be like, okay, I am being taken on a journey right now. But when I'm watching it, it really feels like a cool artsy commercial. Last year I did a dance commercial for Nike where we did something similar to this where we were just weaving different songs together to create a weird, crazy medley. And this kind of has the same vibe and I'm really liking it. Okay. Every single scene that we change, the sound changes, which really just brings us into different worlds. Right here, we just have our normal jazz, we're having a lot of K-pop zooms, and then we get into some of the fine details of this carousel. But the thing that's really sick about this cut, we're having these foreground elements whoosh in front of the screen, the whole carousel is spinning, and then we cut to another shot where we have a foreground element, which is our girl's hair spinning in front of the camera, and it creates an amazing match on action. But oh my, what a freaking intro. Dude, that is so sick. I just wanna watch this over and over, honestly. <laughs> And those hard zooms right when we get into it, that makes us feel that impact of that kick drum. That Sorry, I just, just got really into it there. Lots of zooms out and then... Whoa, Alice in Wonderland magical, what the frick is going on? Lots of the editing is very harsh, whereas lots of times in editing we wanna make it smooth, we wanna make it feel invisible. This editing is saying, I want this cut to just like punch you in the chest. I want you to feel it, I want you to notice it. Especially this cut right here. Boom. Keep an eye on the background here. When we go right here, look over here, the entire background gets blurred. And this is the frame where the background changes. And then the next frame, we have a new background. So the foreground remains the same. It could be VFX or they literally could have people put leaves in front of the camera and then they mask those out. But right there, that's when it changes. And then we're in a new scene. It's pretty dope. Here's the thing, guys. You may have heard it said that VPN stands for Velociraptors Punching Namjoon. But that's not what it, that's not what it is. <laughs> VPN stands for Virtual Private Network, and the best one out there is Surfshark VPN. Virtual private networks are so important because they encrypt your browsing, keeping all of your data safe. When you have a VPN, you can change the location of your IP address so you can virtually travel the world. And let me tell you, that unlocks some superpowers. One of them being online shopping. If you didn't know, goods cost different prices in different countries. So if you just change your virtual location to a different country, you can get the cheapest goods online. And this is a hack that will let you pay off your VPN in one purchase because of the deals that you are getting. Also, if you like to watch videos online on YouTube, Netflix, Facebook, different countries have access to different content. So if you want access to the world's library of content, you gotta get yourself a VPN. And we got a deal for you guys. Get Surfshark VPN at surfshark.deals slash Jordan Orm and enter promo code Jordan Orm for 83% off and three extra months for free. Get access to the internet of the entire world with Surfshark VPN. <laughs> On this channel, we always talk about what the story of the video means because it always helps and informs our music video editing decisions. And according to Soompi, DICE is a story about Enmix's own come up. They're comparing their careers to a game where they have people against them that are trying to trick them, that are trying to make them fall down, but they are going to play the game, they're gonna roll the dice and figure out if they can make it as a K-pop group. So that's why the lyrics say, challenge is about to start, it's not gonna be easy, hold on tight, 
Let's go, babe. That's not exactly what it is, but it's something like that. Ooh! Oh my gosh. Oh my. Watch this transition. They lay out the cards, which looks like they contain a bunch of dice inside of it. And then they start to mask out the inside of the cards with the same formation that the VFX dice are actually in. So they went from a real shot to a VFX shot to another real shot. Wow. This is all over the place. A huge thing in this video is that one shot leads into the next, and a big part of it is matching action. When she throws up the dice right here, we cut to a VFX shot of the dice popping up, and then as the dice starts spinning, we cut to another shot that is also spinning, matching the action. It just flows so nicely. Yo! What is going on, bro? What is happening? Again, we have some matching of the action where there's a hamster running. Look how they zoom in and transition to this amazing animation. And I can't begin to understand all of the symbolism. Like, what does the cat mean? What does the joker mean? What does the dolphin mean? What do these pirate ships mean? So let me know what all these symbols mean in the comments, and I would love to have a discussion down there. This matching of action, of spinning, the animation is so cool. Ooh, that's disgusting, honestly. But we have to talk about this animation. It's pretty simple. Rotoscope out the members and animate the background frame by frame. One, two, three, four, five. Five frames of animation. So an artist just has to go in and say, okay, I'm gonna use these black lines and we're gonna put something in there. I'm gonna invert them. I'm gonna add some cats in the background <laughs> and it's gonna be amazing. So they have five pictures every time that they do that. Hey, I completely missed that hey. But that was cool that they used the hey in the background to pop on those animations really quick. This part's dirty. Because the lyric said, jump up for higher. The editor decided to use speed ramps to emphasize the fact that we're jumping. So the editor sped up when she was falling down and slowed down when she was floating to make it seem like she was a little more weightless and to emphasize the jumping that is talked about in the lyrics. The whole thing with Enmix is that they are literally doing random stuff for the sake of doing random stuff because it might be cool. I personally kind of like it because you never know what's gonna happen next, but also humans tend to like structure. And if you don't have structure, there's gonna be a whole group of humans that really don't like it. And that's what we're seeing happen with Enmix. Ooh. Oh. Okay, stuff's getting serious now. That middle song did not last for very long. One minus one is none. What is minus one from none? Don't answer in numbers. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. The lyrics said, so what if it doesn't make sense? So what if it doesn't make sense? So what if it doesn't make sense? Guys, stuff has to make sense. You can't just randomly make stuff and have people connect with it and like it. Following structure is essential to creating lasting artwork. I don't know if that's true, actually. What about abstract artwork? So maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's just a certain type of art that some people don't vibe with. That's crazy, bro. This is literally abstract painting, but in K-pop form. If an abstract painting became a K-pop group and mixes that. Look at this. What is she doing? What are they doing in the room? They're all in the corners. They're like scared of the cats.
What the f <laughs> What do cats represent? I'm confused because a white cat symbolizes rebirth, happiness, money, prosperity, and they're afraid of the white cats. They literally put up question marks. Yeah, that's how I feel. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. But look at this transition, bro. They're using a ton of After Effects. You can tell because of the chromatic aberration and the way that they're animating out, there's a lot of stacked effects to create this effect. But you could literally do this just in Premiere by rotoscoping her out, mirroring her, and then literally having different layers and fanning her out. And then they did the exact same thing with After Effects, a little bit of lens distortion to stretch out the sides, some turbulent displays to warp everything, and then just slowly animated everybody in with this chromatic aberration. And if you don't know the chromatic aberration, it's like when you're looking through a prism and white gets separated into the rainbow spectrum. And lots of times on old lenses, that tends to happen on the edge of the lens because the light going through the edges of the glass refracts differently than the light going through the middle. Okay. So they're playing the game and it's not working out. It's creating a storm. The dice turned into a, a, a planet or something. Cats disappeared. <laughs> That's creepy, bro. That's a nice bookend, though. But wait, there's more. Oh, frick, it's cracking. Looks like the story is continuing. Will Ennix survive the haters, the people that don't like abstract art? It remains undecided. If you enjoyed the video, please consider hitting that subscribe button. Thanks so much for hanging out with me and I'll see you next time.